Daniel, the sixth chapter. And we're going back to the 10th verse because there's something else in here that the Lord wants you to see. Daniel, the sixth chapter, and the 10th verse says, Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. And for a few moments today, I just want to talk about do you have what it takes? Would you look at your neighbor and don't be afraid of them either. Don't you be afraid of them. You, I, I need you to ask them today, do you have what it takes? Thank you, ushers. I want you to look today because the name Daniel, the name Daniel means strength. The name Daniel means endurance. You look at many of these biblical names, there was always something to a name. Sometimes we name our children something in this day and time, have no idea what the name means. But there was meaning in the Bible as it relates to these names and Daniel mean strength and endurance. And as we look at Daniel, we know that his faith enabled him to be firm in spite of subtle temptation. Let me tell you how the devil really, really works. And he does work. He works through subtle temptation. He's not always loud. He's not always showy. But many times it's, it's subtle. Subtle temptation works quietly unlike the three Hebrew boys. All of us are familiar, familiar with the story of the three Hebrew boys. They were challenged to open idolatry, to worship idols openly so that everybody could see everybody was required. When the instruments began to play, they had to bow down openly. They had to do this in front of everybody. You know, many people are bold and they're strong when it's in the open. Especially when you're around your crowd. You, you, you don't have a problem today lifting your hands, praise the Lord, thank you Jesus, I love you, and you, you pray and you worship God because we're in the open. But what about in private like you you go to a restaurant. You know you're supposed to bless your food. But the first thing a lot of people do, they look around to see who's... And then they just won't openly pray, but they, they, they put their hand over their mouth. Look about the food. Jesus' name, amen. Because it's, it's not your crowd. And so you feel as though because you are not in the right place, you cannot do it. Many people are bold and strong in the open, but when you are challenged, behind closed doors, that makes the difference. Daniel was simply invited to neglect prayer to the true God in public. Can't you hear people around? No big thing. That's all you got to do. Just neglect God in public. Nobody wants to see you praying like you used to pray. Just 
Go in your room. It's not necessary for you to be a hero. It's not necessary for you to act like you so spiritual and you so deep that you got to go to your window and open up your window towards Jerusalem. All we're asking you to do, Daniel, is for 30 days is for you to pray in private. But what they were really asking Daniel to do was just compromise. I know what your relationship is with God, but just compromise. Just pray in private. After all, you're still praying. You know, some people can get deep when they know they did wrong. And they can spiritualize it. But God knows my heart. He knows my, I know he knows your heart and he knows what you did too. <laughs> and so this is, this is why they were trying to deal with, with Daniel. Just keep the window closed. You know, the spirit of the world towards Christians, the spirit of the world towards the body of Christ is still the same. You may not know it, but the world wants you to compromise what you believe about God's word. In fact, they'll flip the script on you. They'll have you feeling bad because you believe this word. And they'll call you a hater because you believe this word. They will twist what love really is because in this day and time, love means discipline. You got to understand, people of God, what love really is. Love means correction. I, I know I grew up in a, in a different day, but I, I, I found out that my daddy and my mama really loved me and they showed me that they loved me while they corrected me. They could have just took their hands off me, just do what you want to do, but because they loved me. Oh, I didn't understand it then. I wasn't that spiritual. I want you to know that. I wasn't that spiritual. Here, my dad with the belt, you don't act right. You, you going to do right. You going to do right. And this hurts me, son, more than it hurts you. I felt like just give me the belt just for 30. <laughs> but I realized as I got older, that they really wanted the best out of me. And I think people that you love, you got to stop being phony with people that you love. If you really love them, you ought to tell them what the word of God says because the word of God, if you know the truth, the truth will make you free. And I'm, I'm a witness today, but the world wants you to compromise what you believe as it relates to the word of God but in order to have what it takes you must possess decision of character repeat after me decision, decision. of character now, I want you to know how important this is as it relates to decision of character because I'm here to tell you, your character will be tested. Now, there's a difference between character and personality. Personality is who people think you are. But character is who you really are. And sometimes you're going to have some tests in your life. You can talk about, I'll trust in the Lord till I die. And I'm depending on the Lord. But there's going to come a point in your life where your true character is going to be tested. And the question is, are you going to stand up for God I live, for God I die, in spite of how things look? I am going to trust God anyhow. It was Sir Fowell Buxton. He said, the longer I live, 
the more I am certain that the great difference between people, the great difference between the feeble and the powerful, the great difference between the great and the innocent, the great and the insignificant is passion. That's what separates the strong from the weak. Energy, passion, and invincible determination that I'm going to stand if you like it. I'm going to stand if you don't like it. It's it's a fixed purpose. I'm looking for somebody today who has a fixed purpose. I, I, I'm not talking about a sometimey purpose. I, I, I'll follow the purpose as long as the sun is shining. I'll follow the purpose when, 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 when it's looking good, but when it gets bad, I forget all about my purpose. I'm talking about the difference between strong and weak, good and bad is that invincible determination, invincible determination that I believe what I believe and I'm going to stand on what I believe. And I got some news for you people. You can try if you want, but I don't care who you are and I know you want everybody to like you. I know we want a Rodney King theology. Why can't everybody get along? But I'm here to tell you, some people ain't gonna like you no matter what you do. Some of y'all need to get over people. That's what you need to get over. You, you, you need to get over people who are trying to define your life. Because everybody's not going to like you. Now we say that we like Jesus, but are we really like Jesus? Because one thing you got to look at Jesus and he was a person full of love he would straighten people out when they would get on people you remember even the woman that that had made mistakes and Jesus looked at all these self-righteous people and he said if you without sin you cast the first stone they all backed off <laughs> don't call me out Jesus Jesus was 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 one he was always sensitive to the needs of people but he would always tell people the truth and many times when he got through preaching you know what the Bible said about him the crowd they were upset the crowd was disturbed here's what the Bible says and they were offended <laughs> who does this Jesus think he is and they <laughs> were offended now you got to check yourself out are you trying to make everybody like you or is there some point in your life you're going to tell somebody the truth and they're going to get offended they're going to get upset you ain't my friend no more you ain't had to tell me that or are you going to try to hide it from them or are they going to look at you and say you offended me because you told me the truth there comes a point in your life and that's why I'm asking you today do you have what it takes are you a wimp or do you have what it takes because I'm here to tell you God is looking for some bold soldiers in this day in time who will cry loud spare not lift up their voices like a trumpet in Zion and show the people their transgression the reason why so many people fail in life is because of want of purpose want of purpose they start for a certain goal and then allow themselves to be diverted 
from their purpose. Who's big enough? Who's strong enough to divert you from your purpose? Now, 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 now maybe you, you need to get clear on this so that you can understand what your purpose is. And I'll let you know what my purpose is. I don't hide it from nobody. I know what my purpose in life is is I stand on it I mean it from the bottom of my heart I hope it is your purpose but I do know it's my purpose my purpose as a Christian my purpose as a born again believer is to please God that's my goal y'all that's that's my goal. I know sometimes I may work on your nerves, but you got to excuse me. My goal is to please God. And I know many times when I'm pleasing God, I can't always please man. But I can't help that. My ultimate goal. Oh, I wish I had some witnesses in this place. What is your ultimate goal? going to look at God and say I can't go with you on this God because I'll lose my friend I can't stick with you on that God I know you woke me up this morning started me on my way clothed me in my right mind everything that I have is because of you but I can't lose my friend over you so you so deep in what you want to do Love you is wrong. I don't want to be right. That's, yeah. So wrapped up. So wrapped up. But I think that there is somebody in here, your purpose is to please God. God if you're included in this number I thank God for you but I want to let you know if your purpose if your purpose is not to please God not to glorify God you got to deal with that you, you got to check yourself out am I pleasing him or not pleasing him and you got to check yourself out and then you got to ask yourself a question do I have what it takes to please him or am I am I a sellout you you don't have what it takes if you don't know your purpose. Your purpose is not just for the new house, the new car. Your purpose is to please God. Worship pleases God. That's why, that's why we worship. Some of y'all can't, can't worship six minutes. But you enter into his gates with thanksgiving and you enter into his courts with praise. Oh, uh, look at somebody, ask him, do you have what it takes? Do, do you have what it takes? So if you, if you don't know your purpose, if I could make a recommendation to you, and maybe before you leave here today, you'll understand what your purpose is. Hear me good now. Do not lose everlasting happiness for any earthly consideration. Look at somebody tell them it ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. It ain't. Man, don't. Don't. Don't you give up what God has for you for some earthly consideration. Never ever just live for the present and sacrifice the future. How many people get so wrapped up in the moment you forget all about the future? Devil 
dollars played with somebody's mind. That's why they're in jail for 20 years, 30 years, because they live for the moment, forgot about the future, thought that I could rob this bank, thought that I could get away with this little bit of money, not realizing that I was messing with my future. That's the devil's job. He steals your moment. and makes you think that your moment is better than your future. Madoff didn't even need all that money. But he's in jail today because he got wrapped up, thought he could get away with stealing in the moment and messed up his future. And people in, in here today, messing with the moment, but messing with your future. Some people got something today, a disease today, you wasn't supposed to have because you got wrapped up in the moment. Yeah, my day was herpes and all that, get a little shot. But they ain't they ain't no little shot, they ain't wrapped up. You can't get so wrapped up in the moment that you forget about your future. That's what Potiphar's wife tried to do to Joseph. Joseph had a dream. God showed him that I'm gonna raise you up real high. Just follow through on your dream. And here comes Mrs. Potiphar trying to mess with little Joseph. Man, Joseph starts running. I'm sorry, Mrs. Potiphar, I can't do that. I, I got a dream and I can't let you mess up my dream. You, you, you need to check yourself out. Ask yourself, who's messing with your dream? Who, who's messing with your dream? That's how, that's how the devil works. He works with, with subtle temptation. I remember it's about 20 some years ago now, but I remember I preached and went back to preach in my hometown and one of the little girls I used to go with. She was there. And she grew up, she looked good. And she came to the altar after I preached. Hey, Paul. I, said, I ain't gonna call him. I said, what, what, what you doing, girl? You doing what, what you doing with your life now I, I'm making it since you left me and, and, and you know I'm just I'm just talking I'm married I'm happily married and I'm saying I left you no you left me no you left me no you I said hold on man I screamed out Deborah The devil will try to mess with your moment to stop your future. But I think I got some witnesses here. Don't you let nobody mess with your future now. Don't, don't let nobody mess with your future. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Because if that, if that, if that, if that didn't happen, I probably wouldn't be here today. I'd probably be in the hospital or dead. So I, I'm glad. <laughs> nobody can mess with your, with your future. And so... So you, you have to know this, no, no earthly consideration. Don't just live for the moment. Keep your eyes on the unfading crown. Yeah. Man, you're about to get a reward, y'all. I know the race isn't given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, but I think I got some witnesses here. If you endure yeah. till the end, I know weeping may endure for a night, but joy is getting ready to come in the morning. Just hold on. Keep your windows open. Look at somebody, tell them, keep your windows open. Keep, keep your windows open. You got to know that. You got to know what's in store for you. He has prepared more for you. In sin. It's attraction when you just look what he's prepared for you. Sin loses its attraction. I, I, I guarantee you, just keep your eyes on Jesus. And anything that comes your way, it ain't worth it. No, thank you. It ain't, 
it ain't worth it. And so in any situation, you don't have to close your windows. But if you have made a commitment to the Lord, you don't have to compromise. This is who I am. This is what I believe in. And some of y'all, I know, I know your windows are open today. You, your windows are open today. But when you get mad, you close your window and you cuss somebody out, don't you? You, 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 got, see, you, you don't be cussing with open windows. But, but I, I, I'm here to tell you, you got to keep your window. Preach, Pastor. You have to keep your windows open because the devil is trying to mess with you. Daniel said it ain't worth it backing off on what I believe just to please you. I want to please Jesus. We used to sing an old song that says, oh, I want to see him. Look upon his face there to sing forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory. Let me lift my voice. Cares are past. Home at last. <laughs> Ever to rejoice. Look at somebody ask them, do you have what it takes? Do you have what it takes? I'm here to tell you and I'm almost finished. It takes a firm, decided steadfastness, a regard to God and his will, whatever arises. I'm coming to speak in your life today because you're going to deal with some tests in your life, but I'm here to tell you, if God be for you, he's more than the world against you, and it's time for you to witness to somebody, tell them, I have what it takes, I have I ain't going to give up in this season because my enemies ain't worth it. My job ain't worth it. The people that I'm around, ain't, I feel like preaching in this place. You have to know that when you keep your eyes on Jesus, you see there's such a thing as religion that bends to circumstances and I stop by to tell you don't let your relationship with God bend to circumstances for God I live for God I die I think I got some witnesses here won't he be with you in the midst of your struggles won't he be with you in the midst of your pain, keep your windows open. I want you to witness to somebody else. Tell them, do you have what it takes? Do you have what it takes? And you can look at somebody else and say, yes, I do. I got Jesus and greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. I think somebody ought to praise him today and just thank him for being who he is. Yeah. You ought to praise him. I got what it takes. No weapon that's formed against me shall prosper. Don't you mess with me. Look at somebody say, I got it, I got it, I got it. I, I got what it takes because God is on my side. Old folks used to say, when I can read my titles clear to mansions in the sky, I'm going to bid farewell to every scientist and I'm going to work my weeping eyes. Now don't wait till the battle is over. I need something. Shout now. Shout now. Shout now. Is there anybody? Is there any money? Won't God make a way out of no way? Won't God fix it for you? Yes, 
That's why you got to put on the whole armor of God. The race isn't given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. But you got to endure to the end because my goal is to give God the glory. Hey! Give him the glory. Hey! All of my pain, all of my troubles, everything that I'm going through. Hey! Yeah! Give him the glory. got to have what it takes. When you have what it takes, God will take what you have <laughs> and he gets glory out of it. 